Hi, welcome to my channel. In this first part of this Excel Quick Tips tutorial, we will review simple and easy solutions for calculating year, periods, and quarters for a calendar or fiscal year using simple Excel formulas. In part B of this tutorial, we will explore how we can reuse those formulas going forward by creating user-defined functions that leverage existing logic and enhance Excel functionality. Having said that, let's dive into the details. Many companies use fiscal year to track milestones, budgets, and performance that does not necessarily coincide with the regular calendar year. Challenge becomes clear when the majority of finance enterprise systems, or any other accounting system for that reason, return transactions in real time, that is calendar dates, but all reporting needs to happen based on fiscal year. Converting calendar dates to fiscal dates has always been an area of confusion for many. The goal of this video is to clarify this process by utilizing simple Excel formulas. Let's review the data. Starting on the left, we have two calendar years, 2021 and 2022, with 12 months respectively. In our example, the fiscal year is defined as September through August. Another popular fiscal year used by many corporations is July through June, but variations tend to vary based on the nature of a company. At the left part of the grid, we will answer calendar dates questions derived from a date, such as calendar year, calendar period, and calendar quarter. At the right part of the grid, we will answer fiscal year conversion questions derived from a date, such as fiscal year, fiscal periods, and fiscal quarters. Where applicable, I will demonstrate the thought process that determined the creation and use of such Excel formula solutions. The solutions presented here do not represent the only solutions available and do not require advanced knowledge of Excel to understand. Let's answer the first question, which is get the calendar year number from a date. The formula will engage the year formula, which returns the year corresponding to the date in a cell. Let's enter the formula. Let's copy the formula in the remaining cells below and review the result. So the calendar year return is correct. Now let's, let's write a formula to come up with a text representation of the calendar year by adding a text C Y A dash before the calendar year. We're going to achieve that by engaging the ampersand operator, which is the concatenate operator. So we start the formula with quotes, CY does, close quotes, ampersand, and then we add the formula that returns the year. And there you have it. Let's copy the formula all the way to the, down to the remaining cells and review the results. You will use this text representation in reports or sorting and so on and so forth. Let's move on to the calendar period number. The calendar period is related to the month number, so we're going to engage the formula month, which returns the month number from a date. Let's enter the formula, and let's copy the formula to the remaining cells to ensure that we get the right result. Everything looks straightforward. 
So now let's move on to create the character representation of the period by adding a text CYP dash central, I mean, calendar year period. And then we concatenate with the month number. Let's copy to the remaining cells. Now notice the following potential issue. For periods 1, 10, 11, and 12, the fact that the first period is just one, it may create, it will create a sorting issue when we sort transactions by this text representation. So what we need to do is patch the single number period with a leading zero so that way everything is structured uniformly and the sorting will work. How do we do that? We're going to engage the formula text which adds leading zeros to a number. So we include the month period within the text constraints of the formula and we give it a, a, a format code of 00, zero which will create the leading zero in our text representation of the calendar period. Let's copy the formula to the remaining cells. And as you can see now, all the periods, numbers, the two digits. So sorting will become, will act correctly when we decide to sort transactions based on the calendar period text. Let's move on to the calendar quarter number. Let's go over the methodology for the quarter calculation given a date. The methodology is the same whether you're calculating calendar quarters or fiscal year quarters. Let's go over the assumptions. Each quarter is three months. Determining the right quarter relates on determining first the period month from a given date. Whether you are converting a date to a calendar or fiscal quarter, the method is the same. We can derive the algorithm for extracting the calendar quarter or fiscal quarter from a date as follows. So the quarter is the month period divided by three. Let's test a theory. As you will see, the partner that we're encountering for month period that's evenly divided by three, we're okay. The ones that we have a problem are the ones that return decimal. So we have to find a way to round up these numbers to the next uh, whole number. So we're going to engage the function round up. Let's enter the formula. Round up. Let's get the month, the month period, that is. Divided by three, the number of quarters, I mean the, the number of months in a quarter, and route it to zero, meaning to the next whole number. Let's copy the formula in the remaining cells to ensure that the results is what we're expecting. As you can see, quarters are reported correctly. Let's move on to the text representation of the quarter, meaning let's add the word QTR dash before the quarter number in case we want to use that in reports. So we're going to engage the concatenate operator and all we have to do, leverage the formula that returns the quarter and just add the text quarter in front of it. Let's move on to the calculation methodology for the fiscal year given a date. Looking at the definition of the fiscal year 2022, notice the two assumptions. We have four 
last months from 2021, September through December, and eight months from year 2022, January through August. The deciding factor of determining the fiscal year given a date is the number of the month. In other words, March, September through December, whose year is 21, belong to 22, but the remaining months belong to 22 already. So we can, our methodology is as follows. We have to compare what the month date is and set up an if statement. And if it's greater or equal to nine, then we increment the year by one. Otherwise, we leave it as is. Let's go enter the formula in our grid. Let's type in the formula. If the month is greater or equal to nine, then we get the year back plus one. Otherwise, we just get the year. Let's copy the formula to double check the results. Focus in the fiscal year definition. You see that the green areas, they all turn to 2022. Moving on to the character representation of the fiscal year, we leverage the formula that we just added for fiscal year number. We just concatenate with the Amberson and we add the character that we want. In this particular case, I use fiscal year dash and there you have it. Let's also copy the formula to the cells below so you, we can ensure that the result is what we expected. And as you can see, there you have it. Fiscal year period calculation methodology. Let's review the definition of the fiscal year 2022. Let's look at the relationship between calendar periods and fiscal periods. For the four months, September through December, look at the pattern. September converts to one, October needs to convert to period two, November to three, and so on. For, for the second part of the fiscal year, for the remaining eight months, we have January, which is period one, needs to convert to five, and so on and so forth. So basically, the period, the fiscal year period, depends on the calendar period on which part it falls into. For the first part, September through December, we will subtract eight months to get it. And for the second part, January through August, we will add four. We're going to engage the if statement to perform that. Let's enter the formula. If the month is greater or equal to nine, then we, we use the month and we subtract eight. Otherwise, we add four. Let's copy and paste the formula to the remaining cells and review the results. Check the green areas. You can see the conversion is successful. Moving on to the text representation of the fiscal period, we're going to leverage the format, the, the formula we used for fiscal period conversion, and we're just going to add the text in the front. So we could contain FY dash, the Amberson, and then we add the formula that will give us the fiscal year representation. Let's add a leading zero before the period number via the text function for sorting correctly. Copy the formula, check the result, and it looks, and everything looks fine. Let's move on to the fiscal year quarter. For the fiscal year conversion, the methodology is identical to the quarter calculation methodology that we included earlier. We're going to leverage the conversion formula that gives us the fiscal period. The rest stays the same. So take a quick look at the methodology. And let's go enter the formula. We leverage the formula that converts the period to a fiscal period. 
so we enter the formula accordingly and now copy paste to the remaining cells and make sure that a quarter number fiscal quarter number is the same let's go over the text representation we're going to add FYQRT before and actually this time let's do an example with using the text to include the le leading zero before the quarter number and there you have it and there is the complete grid all the questions related to the dates conversions answered stay on for the recap of all the formulas that we used here and don't forget to view the second part of this video that will demonstrate how we can leverage Excel functionality and create user-defined functions so we don't have to keep entering these complicated formulas over and over again. Thank you for watching.